U2 is back with the love song, All I Want Is You. Oh, that's U2, Bono, and I did the song one, right? Yes. Hi, everyone. I am returning to a band that I have listened to once before, and that is U2, and this time the song is All I Want Is You. My first song I listened to was One, and I remember that I really enjoyed that one. I, th I thought it was a, a beautiful piece of music. So this is going to be a nice return to a band that I enjoyed previously, and I am looking forward to seeing what this song is like because it's one that I have not heard. Before I dive into all of this, let me remind you that if you want to check out the series that we have going on, we have three happening right now. There is the Beatles 150 series where I'm listening to 150 of Beatles songs. There's also the Walls series where I am going through detail by detail, song by song, every element of the Wall album by Pink Floyd, and then there is the most recent edition, which is the Queen 50 series, and I am listening to 50 of Queen's songs. All of those can be found on my Coffee and Patreon pages, even before they are publicly released here. So if you want, you can check those out. Um, but let's dive into YouTube. Vlad has given me a few facts about this song. Of course, I already am somewhat familiar with the band because I heard it once before. But this song in particular was written by Bono and was dedicated to his wife, Ali, in 1988. I remember that Bono was named in 2005 as one of the Time Persons of the Year. He was also granted an honorary knighthood by Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom in 2007, for his services to the music industry and for his humanitarian work. And he was made a commander of the French Order of Arts and Letters in 2013. This song reached number four in the UK charts and number two in Australia, number 12 on the Dutch top 40, but only reached number 67 and number 83 in the Canadian and American charts, respectively. It appeared on the soundtrack for the 1994 film Reality Bites. The popularity of the song in the film led to a re-release in 1994, where it reached number 38 in the US Top 40 mainstream charts. Okay, so it has a varied um, reputation as varied success in popularity. But let's see how it sounds and see if I like it. Isn't that a beautiful opening? I'm noticing right away that this is written, at least this score is written in four time, four beats to a bar. But what I'm hearing is a bit different. I'm hearing groups of three, another group of three, and then a group of two. And that gives it this nice little bit of a pattern that we start to fall into and then just kind of nudges us ahead a little bit. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And and the fact that there's a three and a three and a two it keeps it just a little bit asymmetrical, we could say, and, and keeps us from settling into a, a short square pattern, which means when this voice enters, it feels extra fluid and beautiful. I've really enjoyed that. Diamonds on the ring of gold. You 
violin entering here. Just that high little note, it's so small, it you almost don't notice it, but then it grows a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And this voice is beautiful. I really enjoy the voice. It's so expressive and and warm and and sensitive and embracing. It's really beautiful. But let's go back because I want to listen to this violin as it enters again. You say you won't Diamonds on the ring of gold You say you won't Your story to remain untold But all the promises From the cradle to the grave when oh, That's all growing a little bit stronger I want is you Such a nice build up and arrival at the larger ensemble here just as we're settling down on when all I want is you. Basically, we've heard an entire verse. And we've heard this little ribbon of a violin carrying throughout. But our attention is mostly on the voice and what the voice is saying. And then as, as we arrive to this, but all I want is you, then all the other instruments come joining together right at that moment. It's, it's beautiful. Let's back up and listen to that transition a little bit. From the cradle to the grave When all I want is you And here's where all the instruments A nice bit of piano there. You know, I'm I'm really enjoying this melody as well. As you know, I love melody. I love a melodic line that carries and takes us somewhere. I love it when a melody suits the lyrics or the message of the piece. And I love it when music has multiple layers that, that weave and blend together so that there are different places we can put our attention. And all of it creates a sort of sound world, a, a three-dimensional, a multi-dimensional space in which we can sit in the center and enjoy all that is happening around us. And this has started with all the things that I love. First, it began with melody and this, and this voice that is very... It's, it's one of the things that makes, although this is only my second U2 song I've listened to, I'm going to say it's one of the things that makes U2 special, is this voice. And that is what we 
heard at the from the very beginning is this lo, this lone voice just a little bit of strumming accompanying but nothing really significant lone voice carrying you say you want diamonds on a ring of gold you say you want your story to remain untold but all the promises we make from the cradle to the grave when all i want is you and the melody suits it so well and picks up the words and carries them kind of on a on a velvet pillow carries them along i'm going to back up because i want to i want to hear it again before i start digging into all the instrumentation that's obviously coming and already happening in the song i'm going to go all the way back to the beginning You want diamonds on the ring of gold. You say you want your story to remain untold. But all the promises we made from the cradle to the grave. This melody is nothing dramatic, it's nothing elaborate, it's very simple and it suits the lyrics because it's talking about one simple desire, all I want is you. And it's, it's carrying us all to that point, all I want is you. But it has a nice contour as we go along. You say, and then it goes up and down a little bit, very smoothly, lyrically. It fits, it, it adapts itself to the rhythm of the words, and it has a nice peak. Get back up just a little bit. You can hear it here. To remain untold, but all the promises we made. Suspension. From the cradle to the grave. From the cradle up high to the grave down low. It's almost as if it's using vertical distance pitch wise to line out, to, to outline a lifespan. The cradle is here, the grave is here. Well, of course, it makes sense to have the grave down at the bottom. The grave. Why would we have the cradle up here? Well, of course, because it's opposite from the grave. And so it's putting both at opposing um, points, pitch-wise. And so we can imagine cradle, the high notes here being the point of beginning, the, the point at the beginning of one's life. And then traveling the whole span to the grave at the end. Basically, it's a musical way of expressing what the lyrics are saying here. That of all the promises we make, from the, from the very beginning to the end, from the height of life to the end of life. And then, what do we hear next? To remain untold, but all the promises we made from the cradle to the grave. You 
that verse it has built and built and grown some more volume wise dynamically as we say and rhythmically it's become more assertive the voice has become more focused and the instrumentation has become richer a beautiful progressive growth and I'm noticing these things along the way but I'm also also simply deeply enjoying this sound and the effect it, it has it's really beautiful it, it has a as I as I said I want to say that it has a very warm feel to it it feels very affectionate, uh, friendly, intimate friendship. And as it's becoming more intense, can I say intense in a gentle way? Because that's what's happening. You hear the instrumentation becoming more pointed, more focused in sound as well as stronger. And yet it seems to be simply an intensification of this feeling of affection. Let's back up and listen to this again. This verse, and I won't stop through that throughout this verse. I just want to enjoy it. And then we'll move into the next verse. And as I was going along, I was marking because I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to interrupt the flow and the experience of it. But I wanted to point out that every time we have one of these things listed, a highway with no one on it, treasure just to look upon it, all the riches in the night, each one of those is essentially the same note, the same melodic fragment. A highway with no one on it. Treasure just to look upon it. All the riches in... And you hear, it's very much like when somebody rhetorically cr 
creates a list. A highway with no one on it. Treasure to look upon it. All the riches in the night. With a comma placed afterwards. And then the next one in the list. And a comma. And the next one in the list. And a comma. It's this build up. This, this uh, by repetition, we are getting this intensification. And it's expressing such a beautiful idea here. And yet it's simply done by placing musically the same phrase, the same phrase, the same phrase. And it builds up this feeling of suspense and tension without being a stressed tension. It's, it's more of a, an expectation that is coming. And it works very well. Suddenly, as it was building and building, and I expected it to build more, instead it backed off and more strings came in. And that created a feeling of a little bit of a, an unexpected twist, a surprise, a, a reset. And it's a great musical technique to use, but now I'm just telling you that suddenly my ears are alerted that I shouldn't fa fall into this groove. I shouldn't settle into this rhythm and this pattern that has been developing too much because there's going to be something else coming. And musically, they want to save room for that. That's where I am as I'm listening right now. Interesting sweeping sounds of strings in the background and this swaying almost like almost like you're feeling the breeze, the winds sway the treetops. And there's a sort of a whistle that is somewhere in there. Nice, very nice. So, backing up, I want to summarize 
what the listening experience has been up until this point in the music because this is growing to almost to the point of feeling epic. It has epic proportions here. And it started with this lone voice that grew, then the instruments came in, it picked up a little bit in dynamic qualities and it built and it built and I expected it to keep building and then suddenly remember where it backed off and there is this softening and becoming more flexible in the instrumentation the strings were almost swinging and there was this feeling of swaying and, and swirling sound in the background. And then it became more, and it's been intensifying ever since, ever since, ever since, ever since. This is something that we as classical musicians do sometimes. If we want to give the impression of an incredible climax and arrival point in the music. Our instruments have limits. Um, volume wise. And so we develop these sort of tricks, you could say, where we build and grow the sound as much as we can. And we grow it and grow it. And just before our instrument becomes maxed out volume wise, we'll back off a little bit. We'll choose the point to back off very strategically. So it's not really felt as a backing off, but more as another surge coming. And by so doing, you can even do that several times. You create this impression of building and increasing growth and then increasing growth and then increasing growth. And so the listener has the experience of hearing the music grow and then grow again and then grow again and then grow again until we are ready to max it out, let it all come to a grand climax peak at the point where the music wants to peak and it is felt more powerfully yet without overplaying our instrument. I feel like that's somewhat what is happening here in this music up to this point. He started to grow and he gave us the ex experience of building, building and then we backed off. And he did it in such a way that we ended up with a very special um, passage of music where the strings were much more squishy, free, swaying, moving musically around. And that carried us to yet another buildup. Now we're at a point where it's kind of peaking. And even the voice has changed drastically. And we feel it all the more acutely because it wasn't just one straight path up to this point. Instead, we've had these two instances of growth. And so it feels all the more powerful here. So, that is what I'm picking up on first time through, is this control of the climax, making us wait, making us build our expectation and making us feel the growth of it, the, the build up to it all the more powerfully. And now here we are where it feels like an incredible release and and passionate expression happening here in the voice in the music 
all of this. Let's back up just a little bit and see if we can follow it through this next climactic section. That's really great. Let's back up because, again, I wanted to hear and, and experience the whole passage before commenting, but I heard some really nice things happening there. We're going to start back here. Again, you've heard me say in the past how this kind of screaming voice is not one that I gravitate towards very much at all. And yet here it feels incredibly well-suited, incredibly appropriate, and it fits the point at which the music has taken us. I feel like it belongs here. It's satisfying to hear it here. And um, it's all the more special because the way the voice has been used up until this point is much more mellow and gentle. So when it breaks free here, it's incredible. I also appreciate that he's able to give this kind of a voice and you've heard me talk about shaping he is increasing the volume through that note even with this style of singing and i imagine that must be kind of hard to do well of course i'm not trained in that kind of singing i i know very little about how to do it well and how hard it is but this is something that I've not heard many singers do. That is to give a crescendo through a note with that kind of wild, um, kind of all stops pulled out voice here. So good. Now notice what, what is happening with the instruments. Now suddenly there's this more angular which helps to keep the momentum going here. Adds a nice layer. And as I was just listening to this, I was thinking how it's 
restating the voice, resetting the voice and what the voice has just expressed now is being carried on with this guitar. Let's back up and listen to that in continuity there because I feel like the two belong so close together. They're almost dependent one on the other. And just as we think that we have reached the limits of intensity, where even the guitar feels like it's getting to be maxed out, and then it settles into a more um, deeper sound, which again takes us back to the voice we were just hearing. But now this is the rhythm which we had at the beginning. And so it is kind of summarizing and pointing our attention back to what we just heard, at the same time moving us forwards. I love that piano note. It feels so perfect. It was set up by the drums. The drums helped it feel so good. Listen to it. It's the drums. Finding our bearings. Now the strings are back. Oh, that's nice. I didn't expect that to hear the cello coming in. Bum, 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 bum. The same rhythm. This rhythm, which has featured all the way through the music, is now spoken by cello. And it makes a great textural distinction between all these spacey, otherworldly um, staring out into the night sky looking into the vast eternity sounds and we're brought back and we're anchored by this very present, very crisp and clean cello. to the piano. Da 
Platz in Hüste. There's so much happening in that ending section. I want to listen to it again from about here. Actually, no. I'm going to back up. Because I think one of my favorite moments in this entire song is when that piano enters and plays that wonderful bass octave. To me, that note is so incredible in that moment. And, I don't know, at this point, I want to say it makes the whole song. So I'm going to listen from that point. There it is. I love the way all the different sounds are, are woven together. And we hear so much in the fabric of it here especially as we continue. This just feels like the setup. We have some strings swirling in the background. The piano. The bass. The cello. The violins become more melodic. Change of harmonies. down in the, in the bass and with the deep piano. And this is so interesting here. Like we're kind of winding down. That little piano scale in the background? And the, the strings are just bum bum bum. And on top of it, the soaring line. There's so much happiness. From the first notes of this song, I enjoyed the sound. I enjoyed the choice of the kinds of sound that were brought into it. I enjoyed the singer. I also enjoyed the instrumentation. And at first, I thought that the verses and the, the melody with the voice and all would be my favorite part. But as we went through the music, and, and as I listened further and further into the music, I feel like it became more and more satisfying all the way to the end. And this last section is probably, I don't know, it's going to be hard for me to choose which portion of it would, would be a favorite if I were to choose a favorite because they each have something so nice about them. The beginning, as I said, it was warm and friendly and and loving. Of course, this is a love song to his wife and an expression of what he wants and who he wants and his his desire for her. And 
acknowledging what she wants and yet saying, but all I want is you. And it feels like this music is taking us on this journey, this experience of we have all these promises, all these things we want, all these experiences, all the things that we talk about, that we want, that our life is built around. And I hear everything you want and I want to give it all to you. But all I want is you. And the music carries us to that point of expressing all I want is you. It doesn't matter. You say, you say, you want, you want your love not to grow cold. All the promises we break from the cradle to the grave, not just all the promises we make, but then it comes to the end, all the promises we break from the cradle to the grave. But all I want is you. And I think that this music, this song, is a beautiful expression of those feelings and that desire for the one that you love the most. I enjoyed this listen. As I said with my first U2 listen, one, I wanted to return to listen to more of the band. Now I've listened to another one, and this one also makes me think, I want to listen to more of this band. And so, there will be more U2 in the future. I guess this is one that I will probably put on a playlist from time to time. It's tempting for me to want to try to play it on the harp even, maybe make a harp cover. Although, it might take me a bit of time to figure out how to make it work, because it's not particularly a style that suits the harp very well. But I might play around with it, and who knows, maybe I'll surprise you sometime in the future with a harp cover. No promises, but it's an idea that's going to be in the back of my mind, and I'll be exploring it at some point. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.